Hi friends, this is Sherry Rita from Wilmette Public Library. I'm here in camouflage to share with you an unusual story of freedom. It's about a courageous act by a musician named Pablo Casals. Pablo was not an activist at heart. He was just a musician, almost a born musician. By the time he was four, he could play violin, piano, and flute. When he was six, he convinced his dad to make him a homemade cello by running strings over a hollowed gourd. As a teenager, he practiced six, seven hours a day. And after he grew up, he performed up to 250 concerts a year. That's like five concerts a week, maybe? He went to Barcelona, Paris, London, Netherlands, all over the United States. He started his own orchestra um, in Barcelona, where he lived, and he also formed an association that gave free concerts to the poor. How cool is that? But then came the Spanish Civil War. General Francisco Franco took over Spain with a little help from Hitler and Mussolini. Now Franco knew that Casals had spoken out against him and he threatened to cut off both Casals arms at the elbows. Well, Pablo left his beloved Spain and went to live with a family he knew in France. From his room in his friend's house, he could write letters and compose things and he could plan concerts. But then the Nazis took over France. They were on Franco's side, remember? So they told Pablo he couldn't give, he couldn't travel. He couldn't give concerts. They watched his every move. One day, he woke up to a loud banging at his door. Open up, we know you're in there. It was a crowd of Nazi officers who began rifling through his papers, his books, his music. What are you looking for? He asked. We'll know when we see it, one Nazi growled. Pablo bit his lip and clenched his fists at his side. He was so angry, but he kept quiet because he knew the Nazis could arrest him for almost anything. He wondered if he might be shot. Eventually, the chief Nazi officer stopped searching. He narrowed his eyes and said, one day we will find what we are looking for. And he and his men stormed out of the cottage. Pablo slumped to the ground. What secrets did they think they would find in his music? Ah, but that gave him an idea. <laughs> he began to smile as he cleaned up the mess the Nazis had made and then he went out to dig up turnips and potatoes and find firewood for the family he was staying with. While he was out, he saw his friend Ventura uh, Gasol, I think his name was. Hello, Pablo, said Gasol. Gasol, you shouldn't act like you know me, he said. The Nazis will grab you one of these days. Nonsense, replied Gasol. We have too many friends, he said. I hope you're right, murmured Pablo. Come to my house, he said to his friend. I have something to show you. Pablo and his friend climbed the narrow steps to his room where Pablo played his latest composition and Gasol sighed with tears in his eyes. It's so beautiful, Pablo, he said. I hope the world will hear it someday. Gasol, I have something for them to hear right now, exclaimed Pablo. Gasol frowned. Pablo, you know you can't play any concerts, he said. But I can, said Pablo. He lowered his voice to a whisper. Meet me tonight at the foot of the mountain. I'll explain then. Gasol shook his head, but he smiled and he said loudly as he left, Well, just came to borrow some eggs. I'll see you soon. At eight, Pablo whispered. At eight, his friend whispered back. And that very night, both men slipped out of their rooms and met each other at the foot of the mountain. Pablo motioned to the top. Behold my concert hall, he said. Oh, okay, said Gasol, who was kind of puzzled. And behold the bell tower. Gasol was getting an idea. You mean? And behold that the bell was a gift from the free people of Spain to the free people of France, said Pablo. 
Yes, let's ring it, exclaimed Gasol. Let's show people that hope for freedom is still alive. The two friends climbed up the small mountain and then up to the top of the rickety old bell tower. They hoped no one had seen them leave town. Stones slipped out from under their feet and Pablo wondered if they would just tumble to the ground below, but they made it all the way to the top. You are the musician, said Gasol, and you are the composer of this plan. You must be the one to ring the bell. I only hope it works. Pablo gulped. It was only a bell, but the sound of it would be music to the ears of the people below. So he gripped the rope and he pulled. Boom. And it worked. Boom. Out of the stillness rang the music of freedom. Forgetting the danger for just a moment, Pablo rang the bell again and again. And then, let's get out of here, called Gasol. He and Pablo scrambled down the tower, back to town, and into their rooms. They went to bed. The next morning, angry officials announced that the bell ringers, whoever they were, were criminals who would be punished when they were caught. You know what? They were never caught. And their brave little act gave courage to the townspeople who vowed they would stand up for freedom in any way they could. So Pablo Casals lived on long after the Nazis were crushed. He went on to give many, many more concerts. But you know, it might be true that perhaps none of those were as sweet as the ringing of the bell in Prats.